I can promise you two things from this video. One, there will be no fun. And two, there will be no secret sauce ninja tips. This video is different. In this video, I'm gonna walk you simply step by step through how I create a WordPress site and I will not leave this velvet chair until it is done. Yep, the whole website all in one video, every single article, this is how it's done. We're gonna start by selecting a niche, then we're gonna get a domain, we're gonna put WordPress on it, we're gonna do search analysis, we're gonna write the articles, and then we're gonna design the site, done all in this video. So let's start by selecting niche. I'm gonna work with Nathan on this because he does this a whole bunch. So let's give him a call. Yo, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Jim? Good, so I had to call you instead of walking over to your office because I'm not leaving this chair until I finish a site. I uh, want a little bit, somebody to talk through the niches with me. I always like doing a site that I have, I'm kind of excited about. A few things happening in my life right now. One, um, I'm moving, obviously. I'm moving from here in Idaho down to St. George, Utah. And so that is something going on. So maybe some kind of site about moving. We've also been talking a lot about my kids' school. They've gone to an awesome private school here but we don't know what we're gonna do with them uh, down when we move. And so uh, Public School Alternatives is a site we've kicked around for a while. Could be a good time to um, do that. Are there any other sites that you're maybe thinking of for the Creator Studio that I could take on? Um, the only other one that I guess have been seriously in the front of my mind was one about military discounts. You know, we, I've been searching around and having a whole site with just discounts for veterans. I thought that would be kind of a cool site. Um, I'm not sure about the logistics though of that. Like, well, like what would an article look like? I guess articles like military discounts for tires, moving. You know, that's actually not a bad idea. At first when I heard that, I thought, eh, it's like, it's too scammy salesy, but no, there are a zillion, I mean, most people in the United States have some kind of connection. Either they were in the military or their parents were or something like that. That could actually be a pretty big audience for a site. Um, hey Ricky, Jim's in his chair. He's not allowed to move until he finishes the site. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think that one's cool. I like writing about something that I'm kind of into right at the moment. I'm kind of thinking the moving site and here's why. Obviously I can't write all the content myself here. We're gonna have to work with, uh, with our creator studio. One cool thing I think we have is everybody is there. They're coming from all different cities around the United States to want to our creator studio because they're college students. And so they kind of have local knowledge of a million different places. And so if we wrote like, you know, benefits of living in this city or uh, you know how much do houses cost in a particular city we'd have an expert in dozens of cities around the u.s i really like that yeah okay i think we could work with that that sounds and besides the creator studio opens in 20 minutes and so we got to do some search analysis fast okay how about you do the search analysis i'll get things set up on wordpress but you have to send me the domain name. <laughs> King of domain. Okay, I'll get it done. I don't like to obsess over domains. It's not gonna make it make or break a site, uh, whatever domain you choose. My rules are, I want it to be something that at least conveys what the site is about. I want it to be a .com and I want it to be as short as possible. I would rather have a name that's slightly awkward and short than something that's long and very descriptive, but that's just kind of my personal preference. So the site we've determined is we're gonna write about particular cities and like recommendations of the best things there. We're not gonna get into like best restaurants or things to do, too competitive, Yelp and, and TripAdvisor kind of take that. But we do wanna do things like what are the best neighborhoods to live in or kind of things that aren't as uh, competitive, cityrecommendations.com. Cityrecommendations.com is just available. That's nuts. Um, <laughs> hmm. Usually I have to search 40 to 60 different names before somebody comes up, something comes up. I promise that is the first thing that I tried. 
totally available. I'm gonna try a couple others here and see what we find. One thing I'd love to bring out in this domain name is something that says like this is a local person suggesting what this is going to be, you know, the best whatever moving company in the city. Um, so I do want to bring that out. This kind of feels a little generic, but pretty cool that that was the first one we saw available. We're going to fast forward a little bit and I'm going to do some typing, see what else is available. Okay. As much as I liked city recommendations, I think I'm going to go to suggestedbylocals.com. On improved photography when I ran that years ago, we did a series of articles of the best photography locations in whatever city, and then I put in parentheses, voted by the locals. So we'd survey local people and ask them the best places to, to take photos there, and then we'd write articles on it. It just worked really well in the search results. And so I think suggested by locals, even though it's a little bit longer than cityrecommendations.com, just feels like you're getting more authentic information. So I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, this is the process I use to actually set up a website. I'm gonna to go to bluehost.com to purchase our hosting and domain name, and after walking through the hosting account setup process, we'll be ready to install our theme, set up our settings, and send the site over to our writers. trying to calm myself. If you watch the show Fixer Upper, you know Chip and Jojo, you know how Chip just loves Demo Day? Well, Jim loves search analysis, <laughs> like to an unhealthy degree, I love search analysis. Um, this chair is starting to get a little bit uh, uncomfortable here. The unique thing about our creator studio is we're at a college, it's, um, people come from all over the country to go to this particular college. And so the writers are from all different cities. And so I want them to write about a city that they have knowledge in. So the search analysis is gonna be really quick here. What we're going to do is I'm gonna try to find a couple article titles that would really work for any city that have low competition generally. And then we're just gonna have them write it about whatever cities they have personal knowledge of so that we're really getting that insider information. The key to search analysis is so simple. Find something that people are Googling that you can answer better than the other guy. So let's get started. Let's say we pick a city like Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee. Let's see what the population is of Memphis. Okay, 651,000, that's good. One thing I'm concerned about on this site is because they're localized to individual cities, I usually don't love that in a website where we're writing local specific articles because it just brings down the pool of number of people searching it a lot. But I do think because of uh, US politics and the pandemic, there's a ton of moving going on and a lot of people interested in moving around the country. And so I think search volume will be really good for the next several years. I think uh, something like Memphis, 650,000 people live there. And I mean, you think how many people would be moving in each year and searching everything they could think of about Memphis? We're probably gonna get decent search volume as long as we can think of bigger kind of keywords. So I, I do think we wanna pick cities maybe at least 75,000 in population and up. So I'm gonna actually go into Safari because I'm usually signed into Chrome. I'm gonna search moving to Memphis, Tennessee. Now, I'm not interested in these. I'm interested in the people also ask and the searches related to. I just am trying to figure out what type of searches people are doing. Okay, where to live moving to Memphis. So they're looking for best neighborhoods. That's a good topic right here. Uh, pros and cons, I like that one. Is it expensive? I feel like that's gonna be beat by um, more government kind of statistical sites that we wouldn't have that information. Okay, I'm gonna try just a different city. How about we go to Naples, Florida? I went lived there for a couple years during law school. 
Um, is it expensive? Should I move there? Okay. Best communities. Okay, we've seen that twice now. They're essentially looking for the best neighborhoods in there. Let's see what kind of competition there is. As I'm clicking through on some of these articles, it kind of feels like pretty kind of canned content. I'd love just real local knowledge on these places. Um, this one feels like it's an ad for White Sands Realty. It has just a list of a bunch of communities. I don't feel like these are great search results. And so I do think best communities, that's already one topic that I'd be happy to write about. I do wanna check several cities to see what the competition is, but it's looking good. So now I could have all our writers at the Creator Studio write articles on best neighborhoods in whatever city they have knowledge of. So we found one. Okay, now I'm searching moving to Meridian, Idaho, where we are currently. Um, and this is reasons not to move to Idaho. I also saw one bad things about living in or drawbacks to living in. As I've searched several cities now, I've started to see that one popping up a lot. So now we have two different articles we can write. We have reasons not to live in a city, which is interesting because I also looked at pros and cons and a lot of cities have pros and cons lists of the cities. That seemed more competitive, but a whole article based on just reasons not to live in a place, Google seems to be treating that as a different search. The reason I say that is, when I looked up reasons not to live in whatever city, I started to see forums popping up and fewer of the pros and cons articles. So Google did understand that was a different search, reasons not to live in, then a pros and cons list doesn't fully serve that question. And so I like both of those. Another one as I've searched through here is best internet providers in whatever city. That one I think could be really neat. There are several really big sites recommending them, but I, it just didn't feel like an authentic recommendation from people living there. So the way we could do that is we have our writers that have lots of friends on Facebook in there. They could just make a Facebook post and say, hey, who's your internet provider and go do a quick speed test for me. And then we could have great data of like, hey, we surveyed a bunch of people in whatever city. We're, we already have several different articles. I think for the first batch of content here, we're gonna focus on the reasons not to live in wherever. And so that's gonna be our first articles that we're gonna send over to the Creator Studio, have them all write those on the site today. Now, I do wanna make one comment about what we're doing here. This approach is not what you guys should do for search analysis. I've been doing this for a lot of years, and so for me, I, I can see, hey, one type of article call here, I do know this is going to work, and so I feel comfortable taking that one concept for an article and ordering 40 of them, uh, you know, of reasons not to live in here and then do several other different searches. You guys probably should not do that if, unless you have a lot of experience. The reason is, what if you're wrong? What if that, that search that you have and then you're gonna multiply it to a bunch of different cities or whatever, or hobbies or whatever your topic is, what if you were a little wrong and it didn't have search volume or did have too much competition, etc.? It's really risky to put all your eggs into one little search analysis basket of one type of article. So for your first articles, I would definitely recommend trying a bunch of different types of articles, some longer, some shorter, on all different kind of topics within your niche to see what's going to work. Sorry, I'm getting texts. <laughs> instead of just going in one thing, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. Okay, the Creator Studio opens in 11 minutes, and so I gotta quickly make a video for them, just kinda showing them what I want to do. I'm gonna post this entire video in the description, just in case you care, kinda some of the tips that I'm giving the writers on what they, what they should do in these articles, but here we go. Good morning, Creator Studio. You guys probably haven't met me. My name's Jim, I'm one of the owners of Income School. Today we're having you work on a special set of articles for our brand new website, Site suggested by locals.com. So um, what you're going to write, I'm gonna show you my screen here. What you're going to write is 
we just sent the articles of the creator studio and they are getting on it they were writing on other topics today but we told them to put everything else aside and to start writing these articles and i want to let you guys in on a little bit of the process we use there at the creator studio but first let's check in on jim and make sure that he's not cheating he has to stay in that chair all right i have the security cameras over here we're gonna make sure that jim's not cheating because that's not allowed you can see it all right good news i don't think he's left the chair yet so with the creator studio they write articles based on research. So before they write every single post, we give them 30 minutes research time where they don't do anything else. They're not allowed to touch the keyboard other than to write down notes for the article. And during that time, they can watch YouTube videos. They can do all sorts of research to help them understand the topic for the post. After their research period is done, we want them to have some subheadings and also their answer target. Um, the answer target is such a cool opportunity, and if they write it really, really well, it can bump them right up to the top, As, especially on sites where maybe they don't have a ton of knowledge or expertise. This is a great way to have some good SEO. But for this site specifically, we want them to take the knowledge they have of their hometown or somewhere that they've lived and just implement that into a post. And so we want them to link to sites, local sites. We want them to have original images if possible. All of these things are gonna help their posts have more authority. And it's just gonna make it an overall better post, especially because of the knowledge they have. So after they have their subheadings and their answer target, then really all they have to go do is fill in their subheadings. So for all of these posts, it was a 17 reasons to not live in X, wherever they're from. And so they just have to have their 17 reasons and then they fill in their subheadings. And we gave them for these posts three to four hours. Um, and we just told them, write as much as you think is necessary. And generally speaking, the posts, as we're seeing them come out now, they're about two to 3,000 words long. So we're really, really excited about the content that they have. It's all focused on the research. If you have good firsthand research, good original research, the posts are just gonna be better. And I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do in the rankings. So Jim just sent me a message. Stuck in a chair, need logo design for a new site. ASAP. Okay, seems like uh, we have a design emergency on our hands. But that's okay, because in reality, creating a logo for your blog doesn't have to be hard. There are a couple great programs out there. Canva, Vectorstock is another resource we use a lot. And even 24 Hours Logo, if you've got 24 hours and you wanna run a contest and find a logo that fits you, that's always a great option. Uh, but doesn't sound like we have 24 hours. So I think what we're gonna do is uh, go on Vectorstock. Ooh, I love this one. It's a location ping with a heart. I think that's perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna find another design element that I can combine this with. Okay. This one's great. We're gonna download it. Okay, I found two vectors that I love. Uh, I'm gonna take them into Photoshop, mash them up, add some custom text, and then we're gonna have our logo. All right, we did it. I think it turned out great. It wasn't that hard. Let's get this logo off to Jim so we can get that site live. I wonder if he's still in the chair. Look, I get it. You don't have people to help you with each step of the process. You don't have writers to do everything for you. Now any of you can go order content from a content writing service and really create a site just about as quickly as we've done here. I mean, in just several days, you could have your entire site done up on the web, starting to get traffic, and your business can be started if you're willing to pay for the content. But for most of you, you're writing these things one at a time, you're writing these articles, and it may take you several months to get that content up, but this process is really simple. We don't have to overcomplicate this. Go check out Project 24. If you're not in there, I really have no reservations whatsoever and telling you like, if you're gonna treat this as a business and you're trying to create passive income with blogging, please learn from our experience of years of doing this. It's a simple step-by-step -step process. And hopefully in this video, you've seen exactly how you can put it together. That's it. That's all it takes to creating an income online.